This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We're now in front of the house and behind me here you see the Toyota BZ4X. This is the all-wheel drive and in this video we will finally test how thirsty is this car. Is it thirstier than the Tesla? Absolutely. <laughs> so, yes, I charged the car to 100% now. Uh, we are going to, yeah, okay, I will explain now. The, the, the range test now, it's slightly different. We've, I found a method to measure the range quite accurately anyway, uh, without having to waste all day. I mean, we're not going to waste all day anyway, because this one has high consumption and poor range. But okay, let me get inside and I'll show you the stats I present to you. Round steering wheel. Oh, wait. Wait, is it supposed to come with yoke? Okay, whatever. No, what? I actually prefer round steering wheel and stocks right now. Oh, this is priceless. So let me show you. So here actually, this is, I guess this is true stellar charge. So we charge the car to 100% until it stopped and it says 95%. So uh, yeah, uh, all the other stuff here. Uh, okay, let's uh, start driving. Okay, so first we have to drive over to uh, Dahl and then we will do the consumption test over there. But I have to also count this section. That this car is so weird. We have a trip meter here, trip A, trip B. Uh, and then we have some consumption number here. Uh, it says trip average. And then we also have some uh, consumption number here. They don't uh, always correspond. Actually, they, they start to correspond now. That's good. Uh, but they, they are not, the trip are not connected together like you know in a regular car. Uh, I mean, most other cars, except for the Chinese cars, of course. Yeah. So I have to then look at the distance here and look at the consumption. And then I have to reset and do several uh, segments to figure out the battery capacity. So uh, yeah, now we just have to get over to uh, Ionity, I guess. Yeah, we have some traffic now midday. So yeah and then here the temperature and the battery is slowly rising to 19 to 30 yeah we will also do a charging test afterwards so we better try to heat up the battery uh, for normal driving at least maybe not yo-yoing oh it has jbl speakers okay but yeah i, I have to say um the car feels a little bit cramped for a crossover suv and also the soundproofing is not the best you see we're only doing 100 kilometers per hour yeah, this car is also, speedometer is kind of way off, so um, I will do an ex exact measurement once we start the, the exact test. But over here, it's always busy. But yeah, see, we have some rough, rough Norwegian asphalt and somewhat high noise level. Even despite having 60 profile tires and Nokian Hakka Polita R5, you know, with this acoustic foam, then still kind of uh, loud in here. We are now at Ionti Dahl, so uh, now we will start from here, drive the 120 test and then come back again. So nice weather today, not too cold. And then um, I'm just parked in the sun right now, see how schmutzig it is. So um, yeah, you know, when I stopped the car, there's actually a, like a, a summary of the trip. But then every time we start now, there will be a new trip, something like that. <laughs> the whole trip mystery. Okay, let's just start the test now before the traffic uh, becomes too bad. It's one in the afternoon roughly now, so not too bad for now. All right, uh, we have to cruise at 125 kilometers per hour on the speed though, to match 120 GPS speed. <laughs> no wonder why the Toyota drivers are driving so slow. Okay, and the consumption right now is 316 watt hour per kilometer. Holy macaroni, this car is thirsty. Uh, I mean, it's even, well, it's four degrees Celsius over here. Wait, it was, it was eight degrees uh, over at the Nebenes and Dahl. Okay, so it's nice and warm for a March. Yeah, so, and also partly wet, partly dry. Uh, yeah, I'll see how I count this. I think I'll count this as a dry run because most of the time it, it is actually dry. Right, we are now at Strandlicha. Well, look at Mjösen today nice and calm okay so that's actually a very good driving condition for this toyota yeah i will turn around over here and then head back to uh, dal we are back at ayanti dal so oh man okay uh here it is here yeah so consumption was 293 kilo, uh, watt hour per kilometer so i'll write that down and uh, i guess i'll go to the restroom before we do the long test well actually we have only 50 percent battery left but then the car estimates 178 kilometers okay okay yeah, let's uh, do the 90 test then. 
All right, so um, this time we have to cruise at 90. Well, I said to 95, but it tends to go a little bit over. But this is 90 GPS speed, so consumption is kind of high 260. I guess it will stabilize, uh, right? 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 <laughs> yeah, there's also a map here, by the way. Wait, see here. Yeah, oh, look at that. So, wait, huh? Wait, maybe I set to the night, night mode. Not sure. But okay, so, uh, you know, normally <laughs> with most modern EVs nowadays, I would do this test cycle where I, I take a 66 kilometer loop, you know, and then I take the full cycle to uh, Rudshogdan back again. That's a 180 kilometer, 182 kilometer loop. Uh, this time uh, we cannot go all the way to Rudsogda because um, the car estimates we have 130 kilometers of range left. But this is, you know, it's kind of weird. If you turn off HVAC, you will see that suddenly it instantly updates to 166. And then when I turn on HVAC again, then the range drops instantly. So, uh, okay, I guess this is a way for the car to estimate the range. So I also heard that uh, this car has a quite massive buffer below zero. So um, I'm not sure if this thing here corresponds with the state of charge here. We'll find out eventually. So all right, I guess now we just enjoy the ride. And then, yeah, I have to figure out where I turn around then, uh, but not at the regular turnaround point. Okay, let's check the weight. Huh? There's 100 kilo offset now. Okay, whatever. Front axle. Uh... Okay, 11.60, the whole car. Whoa, okay, well, I guess that's uh, not too heavy. All right, let's test a sound system. Weird ordering on the sound, I mean the songs here. Hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Very good impression. Yeah. His bright voice is not uh, unnaturally bright. Pleasant to listen to. Bass also nice and deep. Okay, next song. Okay, and this one. Okay. This one is usually the first song uh, in other uh, cars. Just the way it has been sorted. Wow. Nice and deep and punchy bass. I like it. Yeah. Definitely good. Okay. So as usual, I use uncompressed wave file on a USB stick to get the best uh, quality without any uh, compression artifacts. Wow! Oh, this JBL system is uh, it's pretty good. I'm impressed. Yeah, nice and clear, good detail. Uh, the car is a bit noisy though. So I think the, the, the sound needs to overwhelm some of the noise also. And I, Oh wait, wait, I hear something here. The bass is not linear. Yeah, uh, the, the high tones are not as loud as the lower tones. So there seems to be a peak at, I don't know, while I guess maybe 60 or 80 hertz. Wait, I have to uh, pay attention and turn around in time here. So, so I don't run out of juice or I have to bail out before dark. Oh, wait, 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 there's some rattling. Yeah. Okay, so that was enough. Um, what the heck? This car is so thirsty. I have 207 watt hour per kilometer. What the heck, man? Okay, what did I say about this sound system? Nice and punchy bass, not linear. We have a rattling in the doors, but also fairly clear and natural sound, good details. So if I would give it points, I'd say a seven. Yeah, mm, good. Look here, there's this um, uh, it's one of the, uh, info about the, which motors I use. If I accelerate a little bit, okay, now in the region, yeah, and then you see the front goes, and then both of them, 
but I see that most of the time both motors work together and then also there's eco mode I turn on so you see here we have eco mode here and we can it's just a toggle eco on off but there's also eco mode here this one is not the same this one is eco mode for uh, for HVAC yeah so you just know the difference between eco mode there and eco mode yeah and then also we have one pedal drive here but one pedal ish drive it just enables stronger region so of course it's gonna have this one on during this test yeah so people can comment about this <laughs> and then the consumption so far is 206 watt hour per kilometer 207 what the heck man yeah by the way we are heading back now so uh, um, uh, I'm just afraid that I don't have enough juice so yeah we have a little bit of margin so we might have to drive a little bit back and forth Let's see. how are the, how are the wipers whether can they can they at least squirt and clean yeah yeah kind of ish okay uh, it's like Tesla style you see Tesla also has a, a section over there that is smutzish always oh we get the uh, low battery warning now yeah uh, traction battery level low charge soon and here by the way you also see power limit so there's uh, the, the arc there kind of moves further and further down so that's kind of early because you see here we have 18 uh, percent it seems like it, it maybe the warning came below 20 percent or 19 percent something like that and uh, battery temperature is 11 to 17 degrees so it's not too hot uh, wonder how slow charging speed we get but yeah I'll probably have to figure out something about the whole charging test also so um, but also we, we will check distance error I figure out that the loop we are driving now is 117 kilometers so let's see what the trip meter says all right distance check a little bit past this roundabout here at dawn we should have 117 kilometers uh, right around here ish and we have 116.3 so that is very spot on yeah, I don't think we need to correct for any distance error we're finally here at Ionity oh yeah look at this plenty of Ionity stalls now at Dahl oh, 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 oh. Well, look at that look at that I see more and more uh, ID bus nowadays but okay anyway look here so the consumption was 205 watt hour per kilometer <laughs> we have two kilometers of range left but uh, I don't know how to interpret this because you see we have massive buffer this is like the the leaf you know the rapid getting leaf we have 10 percent while the car claims two kilometers left so i think what they're going to do is that i count two kilometer as you know 20 uh, 205 so we have uh, uh roughly 400 uh, watt hour left over yeah i think that's the closest uh, thing we we cannot count whatever is below zero because we, we we can't expect people to be expert and use some kind of obd tool you know like this one or yeah so uh let's plug in and wait is it does it make any sense uh yeah i think that's it i will just plug in and try to charge wow well, that was the longest handshake ever and then when i plugged in now and we started charging it displayed at as three percent so 10% on the car, I mean, on, on, on the, in the BMS in car scanner is 3%. And <laughs> yes, we are cold getting, we're getting only 70 kilowatt. So I think I just have to charge a little bit and then try to yo-yo because actually, that's kind of funny. I tried to yo-yo uh, just before we started charging. Took a little loop. The only problem is that I have so much power limit that I have like 40 kilowatt on this. I couldn't really yo-yo either. So yeah, let's charge a little bit and then hopefully we get warmer battery than this so I can do my proper journey test because this one is going to be big face palm. Um, the only problem, by the way, is that Toyota has programmed in so that you get two DC fast charging per 24 hour where you get the fast speed. After two sessions, I'm not sure how they count it, then you get shitty speed. We're talking about 40 kilowatt and 20 kilowatt so this is my only chance now uh i just do it like this and then we try <laughs> man it's not supposed to be easy right with toyota all right let's see how much power do you have here ah 116 kilowatt oh yeah so um yeah but i maybe i shouldn't yo-yo too hard because then i might not have enough juice we'll see but whatever you know what? i don't have to strictly start at 10 percent here because the whole scale is kind of messed up anyway 
But yeah, we're gonna take a little loop now. Uh, just trying to yo-yo a little bit. You know, I should yo-yo now when I can. <clears throat> so we're gonna try to heat up these two here, the min and max temperature. I'm not sure how much we need, but based on other cars I tried, <clears throat> I think uh, many cars, they prefer roughly 25 degrees Celsius to get optimal speed. So I guess we'll see, yeah. Oh man. So we heated the battery a little bit. I made a mistake by not charging enough so I could yo-yo more. And now we're getting 100 kilowatt. Uh, what is the... What ambient there? With the, okay. Uh, battery heated... Huh? Wait. The battery heater is not active. Why not? Uh, so we are kind of... Okay, we're getting 100 kilowatt at least. Wait, it has a slow ramp up. Can we see 150? Oh... I'm not sure. Okay, battery heater is not active. It should at least activate battery heater so we can get to, get up to 25 degrees or whatever this battery needs to hit 150 kilowatts. So this might actually be the charging session I record because I don't think many people will hit 150 kilowatts, especially not in winter. Wait a minute, wait a minute. In a, oh, we almost hit 150 kilowatts here. It has e-tron like uh, uh, flat edge charging curve. Well, I mean, it's, it's thirsty like an e-tron, so... <laughs> well, okay, but you can only enjoy this twice per day before it throttles. Okay, and just like the other reviewers also found, I also found that this car is really thirsty and it has short range. So, uh, what is it to say? Yeah, and also when it comes to uh, net capacity, at least when we count until there is no indicated range on display, then I measured 60.8 kilowatt hour. So, of course, if you use the buffer below zero, you get more, just like the leaf, but uh, I don't count that one. So, yeah, uh, what else is it to say about this car? Um, okay, not so good range. And why are you so obsessed about range? Well, normally if you have 500 or even 400 kilometers of range, then uh, no big deal but here since it's so sh so low range here yeah what the, whoa, whoa yeah then it actually becomes a problem you know if you want to hammer on the motorway in winter and if you have roof rack or stuff like that then the range is kind of shitty and that's why norwegians are not too happy with this so um yeah I, I don't know what else to say. It seems like Toyota, they, they can make okay cars. I wouldn't say this is top-notch. I mean, it's comfortable-ish, yeah. But uh, I guess for the price, well, actually, what is the price for this car? Uh, maybe it's not that cheap either. But it seems like Toyota just needs to have a little bit more experience with making EVs. They have been kind of behind in the game compared to the Koreans, compared to Tesla, compared to even Mercedes, you know. Nowadays, they're getting better and better. And Toyota, they are a little bit far behind. So if you say that Tesla is, 10, uh, Tesla is five years ahead of the competitors, then uh, Toyota might be 10 years behind Tesla. Maybe Tesla should start selling uh, drivetrain tech to other companies. <laughs> yeah, but then, okay. I need to test it, guys. We're gonna do 1,000 kilometer challenge with the Toyota B set. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. But the only problem is that I have now used my second fast charging session. I have to wait 24 hours before I try the 1,000 kilometer challenge. And also, normally when I do 1,000 kilometer challenge, I would charge to 100, almost 100% or 100% at home, and then I drive short distance to the gas station, and then I top up on DC before I start with 100% from the gas station. I cannot do that because then I use up one DC session and also that location does not have AC. So I guess I'll just drive slowly like a Toyota driver over to the gas station and then we start the challenge there. And then I have to figure out what the heck do I do because if I hammer it, uh, then I need more juice. And then when, once I use up the two DC fast charging sessions, then the other, the left one is going to be shit. So I might have to drive like a Toyota driver, not drive as fast as I can, or I'll figure out something. But I think you guys need to get over to the grocery store and get some popcorn because there's going to be some big facepalm video with this car, 1000 kilometer challenge coming soon. <laughs> I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.